Holy <laughs> I almost hit a moose. Finally made it into Comox, and after that insane drive, we're still kind of recovering. And while we're doing that, figured we'd put on these uh, new skid plates from OK Expedition. We're gonna replace these, actually. Look at the state of that existing skid plate. It's just been mangled. There it is, all done. Until Derek moves back here with another three vehicles that we need to drive across the country. Yeah, man. I'll be back. It's coming. So we just made a quick stop here at Overland Outfitters in Surrey. Nice guys. Just to pick up this uh, 10 liter water jug here. So that hopefully can hold all our water for this trip. We also picked up this uh, soft shackle, which will come in handy. Now we're gonna head into the mountains. <sighs> and where are we going? Harrison Lake? Harrison Lake. Harrison find Lake. Some hot springs. Check out a fire lookout tower. Uh, this, is, this is the beginning. This is the real beginning. Not that first drive. This is the real beginning to the expedition. Yeah, buddy. Let's go. We are up at the fire tower. What is it again? 
Okay, if we're not pronouncing it right, then I apologize, but we just made it to the fire tower up in the hot latch. And this tower is maintained by the Four Wheel Drive Association of BC. And if you look inside, you have a you have a log book. Let's go take let's go take a look. It's very well maintained. You got some uh, some toilet paper, a Tonka truck, some dolls, and a checkbook for guests. And D already signed us in. There we go. Look at that. It's exciting stuff. Anyways, so Derek and Heather are gonna make some food and I'm gonna get some more shots of this beautiful place. Oh my God. As I was saying, it's gonna get some beautiful shots of this place. Wow. It's on the menu tonight. KD sandwiches, bud. It's a new thing. We're gonna invent it. It's gonna happen. We're gonna make KD and make sandwiches. And then if the KD makes its way into the sandwiches, <laughs> we invented a new thing. It's very complex. And if anyone's done it before, well, shush. <laughs> There's only so much you can do when you only have KD and sandwich meats. So we haven't done a check-in for a while now, but we are where we spill the machine and we're about to head up to this place. Hopefully we'll get there by noon and uh, yeah, we'll take a look and see uh, see how epic this place actually is. You ready? Yo. You ready? All right, let's go. We're going in there. D, we're going in there. Yeah, we're going either in there or up to the right. Oh. There. I'm sorry for stopping the car right now, but Look at this! Oh my god! Why do you live in Ontario, Sam? We were born in Ontario so that we can move over to BC. just made it. Look at this place. It's winter. What do you think of all this? Oh, just incredible. So we finally got everything settled, uh, pitched our tents and have a fire going. And we're gonna celebrate with our first beer in these mountains. You ready? Cheers guys. Cheers. Mountain beer. Oh, mountain beer. Wow, this is a view. Since we're up here, and since there's this nice glacial lake right there, we thought it was a good idea to do a little dip. Ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Ah, oh, ah, it's so warm. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> oh. oh no. Hey, can you feel anything still? Am I, warm. Am I red at all? Nope. Just quivering. <sighs> That's one of those illusions of warmth. Because now I feel warm. Yeah. 
except I don't think I have feet anymore. Amazing. That was some chilly water. Oh. <laughs> All right. We're closing in on 2,500 meters or so. So this ain't gonna be a walk in the park. Well, a short little hike. We're up in this uh, the side of the mountain here and there's a little mine behind us, an abandoned mine. And uh, we'll go take a look and see what's in there uh, a little later, but uh, here we are. Here's the cave. I can't see a thing. Hello from inside the mine shaft. Oh, this is so cool. What's wrong, Heather? Fire <laughs> keeps adding. You me. just you just have to close your eyes and accept your fate. It's burning my pants. <laughs> the uh, smoke's going in the truck. Mm-hmm. Okay. Smoking. Okay. I guess it'll smell less like stink and more like smoke. Hey, it smells good. <laughs> Heather, you smelled stink? I just assume it stinks because, like, we all probably stink. The no, I stinks. smell good. I smell good too. Good morning. The sun's just peering over that ridge right from the bedside. This tent is unbeatable. So this is the James Brood Evasion Evo. If you haven't seen my review yet, I'll throw a link right up here so you can check that out. But this is a hard shell rooftop tent and it is probably one of the greatest things that I've ever slept in. So we're playing this uh, new version of Catan called Mountain Catan, where instead of uh, you choosing your own spots uh, after the order is picked, you get the other two people choosing the spots for you, which means basically you get the worst spots possible on the board. All right, so take a look at this board. We have Team White over here on uh, wheat at a dice roll of two. So that looks like <laughs> looks like a really good start. Yeah. 68 minutes into the game. And look at that. Hey, Team Blue is doing pretty well. Team Orange is in the lead right now. And Team White. <laughs> <laughs> I exist. And a couple other things that I um, just wanted to show you guys. If you could see down there. Again, that's a new skid plate from OK Expedition. And uh, got that when uh, we came out here. They're based in uh, Kelowna. And if you look at that over here, D has graciously offered to break it in and uh, looks like it held up. So good work on uh, an aluminum skid plate here. No problems with it so far. Did a good job protecting the underside of the truck. And man, if I had my old skid plate there and I didn't have this new one, I would have probably been in some big trouble. So happy to have this new unit here. And this, this is the Coastal Off-Road High Clearance Bumper. They make weld kits, so they produce these bumpers in pieces and they ship it to you. And I think the cost is about, the cost is about maybe about half the price of your uh, just ready fabricated bumpers. Uh, so that's really good if you're a welder and you have the ability or you have a friend that welds, you can put something like this together for you. You can get it at a cheaper price point. And the high clearance bumper, it's been working out really well for me so far. So that's been a plus. Also hides a winch on the inside right here. Didn't have to use a winch on this trip, but you never know, right? When you come up to these mountain roads, 
It's always better to be prepared and have uh, all your recovery gear ready. last night that we're gonna spend here and uh, I'm up here at the, uh, the side of a mountain with uh, these two goons. What do you call it a mutant? <laughs> Just taking it in one last time. There's one thing I wanted to say about this place and it's that I don't think I've ever been to an area that's so big and so inclusive of everything that you would ever want in a wilderness like expedition or just a wilderness spot in general. It's got a small lake, has a stream, has a creek, has a waterfall, has mountains, has forests, lichen, moss, everything. It's a playground essentially. It is one giant playground and it's so blessed. This place is crazy. I'm sad we're leaving tomorrow, but I'm really happy that we got to experience it. So I was just rolling along. I had my high beams on. I was um, I I saw these construction signs, but obviously there was no construction going on. So I was like, okay, sort of got me thinking, sort of got me alert. I was paying attention to the road and I was looking at stuff, and all of a sudden you see this moose. Actually, you don't even know that it's a moose. Out far away, you see this weird shadow. And then as you get closer to it, as you get close, so this moose, okay. As you get closer to it, you start seeing this thing and it's a freaking moose. This thing wasn't running across the road. You know, on the signs, looks like this moose is charging. Not in my case. This thing was just dead center in my lane. And it was just standing there on its side. Like it was modeling its new winter coat. But this thing was standing on its side, looking away, and just chilling. The brother was just chilling in the middle of the road. I slammed on the brakes as hard as I could. And thank God there was nobody else around me because I had to swerve into the other lane to make sure I avoided the guy. And oh my God, after I missed the moose, I went and turned around because I knew there was a guy following behind me uh, just probably about a minute out. And so I turned around 
to try and warn the other guy, and the moose was still standing there. It was just chilling. It was like, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, this is a nice winter day in October 2020. I know Toronto is being hit with COVID, but thank God I am in Northern Ontario, close to Thunder Bay, and nothing's gonna happen to me here. So I'm just gonna look at the stars at night because the stars are really bright out tonight, eh, guys? Hey? Eh? Stars are really bright out tonight, eh, boys? My heart is still pumping right now, and my, I, like, I don't even, I don't even want to drive anymore. I, like, Five minutes before seeing this moose, I was like, I wonder if I'm gonna see a moose during this trip. I wonder if I'm gonna see one in the campsite. Definitely wasn't wanting to see one on the road. 2020, you continue to surprise me. And I know I have preached this before, but you're gonna do night driving, you're gonna cross the country, you're gonna do overlanding, car camping, any sort of that stuff. Get good driving lights, because if I had just candlesticks, as my regular headlight beams. I would have not seen this moose. I would have hit it. I would have probably died. It would have definitely died. My car would have gotten wrecked and you're gonna have a really bad day.